Uh, good to see everyone, and welcome back to in-person conversation. And uh, I'm thrilled to be here in Cecilia. I just want to thank you and everyone at the BIS for hosting such a fantastic conference. So hats off to you. It's been such an engaging day and a half, and we look forward to this and the rest of the afternoon. So this session has a long title, which I won't read, The Blooming Landscape of Innovation. But what I really think of this as is the past, present, and future of the Innovation Hub. You're coming on the five-year anniversary, and there's no one better to talk about the past, present, and future of the Innovation Hub than Cecilia Skinsley, head of the Innovation Hub, former first deputy governor of the Ricks Bank. So Cecilia, I'm going to jump right in. I have several questions. We want to get to the audience questions as well. But let's start with the past. Take us through a little bit the creation of the Innovation Hub, why we're here today. You know, If you step back, it's not something you would traditionally think the BIS would do. Sure, happy to. Um, so uh, it became more and more obvious in the years of 2018, 2019, that it was so much going on in the tech space that uh, central banks could no longer ignore. Uh, and I happened to be uh, at the Swedish Central Bank, alternating in the board and the other uh, relevant decision committees here at the BIS. Uh, so when this idea came up, uh, that you needed a consolidated effort to follow, understand, and ultimately also experiment with these new novel technologies. I, I have to say there, there was a sort of energy level in the room that was sort of increasing amongst, I would say, traditionally fairly cautious and, and, um, and conservative governors. It, it became clear that something needed to be done. Um, up until then, um, uh, some of the more... Um, uh, the, the larger central banks, larger institutions, especially in jurisdictions where there was also a large financial industry, which traditionally experiment with novel technologies, they had done experiments. They have been sort of trying to understand blockchain and crypto and the likes. Uh, but, but there were few um, uh, sort of structured collaborations across, cent uh, across <laughs> central banks. Um, and, and, and you know, if you're working in, in one institution, it's always the question of where should we put our money? Uh, what makes sense? Um, so the idea of sort of uh, consolidate a bit of resources a little bit at arm's length away from you, if something is not so to your liking, is, is a very good one. Um, and uh, the idea was to have it as joint ventures, and that's basically what I'm in charge of. It's, it's seven joint ventures, so each center is a collaboration between BIS on one hand, bringing in staff and, and, and resource, economic resources, and then the central bank on the other side. And you just saw two examples of two of my host central bank uh, governors, which is um, MAS and HKMA were sort of our counterparts on the, on the, on the Singapore and, and Hong Kong side. Um, so, so that was the starting point, really. And, and I would say we did a, an exercise four years down the road with, with the same group of governors uh, or their institutions uh, some months ago. And, and, and they sort of agreed that, yeah, it was a very good decision back then. <laughs> no, that's a good report card. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so let's do grades. What were some of the successes? If you had to, you know, go, you're going, you're talking to the board and everyone five years in, two, three highlights. So I would say just getting it off the ground is a, is, is a, is a daunting task. And I, I must reach out also to staff here at BIS because they really took this on legal, uh, finance, um, um, oh gosh, I'm going to forget people, important people now, it's going to kill me afterwards, real, you know, security, real estate, everybody sort of chipped in and said, okay, new department, uh, okay, let's, let's make this work. Uh, I think we've also been able to, I hope we've been able to demonstrate that um, if you have a sort of dedicated separate IT structure, state of the art, if you bring in people uh, willing to learn and, and take... Um, learning from the best and when it comes to project, uh, project management, you can get things um, off the ground and demonstrate the art of the possible fairly quickly. So we, we, a project or a phase of a particular project is, is about a little more than a year, um, but perhaps on the long side, but, but uh, we try to work fast uh, and then we showcase our findings and then we sort of disguise, uh, discuss with our um, um, with our decision makers in the hierarchy, okay, is it is it a good idea to continue with this, or should we should we leave it to the side and, and continue with other things? 
I think a year is fast by central banking standards. And those of us consuming on the outside say, oh, how are they doing another one? So that's, that's how we perceive it on our end. But this is an innovation hub. So obviously, if you're doing it right, not everything's going to work out. We talked about that in one of the earlier sessions. So what have been some of the, I don't know if you call them failures, but things that didn't pan out the way you might have intended? So I think what you're pointing out is super important. Uh, we do not want to be, or I certainly am very mindful of that, we should not try to be something that we decide or strive ex ante that everything should be ship-shaped for production because then uh, people will sort of, the incentives were aligned there uh, and the experimental uh, atmosphere will go away and, and if you're not careful, you just end up being another IT department. And there's nothing wrong with IT departments, but <laughs> we already have that uh, and they're doing a fantastic job. But we need to have a, a, allow ourselves to to think a bit high and wide and experiment. And every time we do that, we create new knowledge. So I, when say people say, oh, well, do you have any successes, Cecilia? I say, yes, because we create knowledge in all our projects. And that is the key to see, OK, what should we take further on? Um, I think another uh, great win is that um, <laughs> We're actually too small, uh, and, and I'm not, this is not a pitch to ask for more resources, but uh, I'll, I'll explain what I mean. Um, but we have a lot of central banks coming out, coming into us and say, we would like to do something of the same. Um, so we are happy to help and, and advise and share our best experiences, and I would say one of the things I think about it, so that's about you know, staffing, resourcing, project management philosophy, uh, things that we have learned. But I, if I would si single out something that is Im Im more important than everything else is to have a separate and dedicated IT structure. Because central banks are usually very cautious on uh, being um, adopting to new things. And, and we are in the cloud. We have tremendous IT team building sandboxes for, for the projects. And that makes a huge difference in, in us being able to work quickly. Uh, but also work uh, very well with sort of the partners and the vendors that we, we bring into projects. So speaking of partners, obviously a lot of what you do, you work with the private sector, you work with commercial banks, the next session will feature that. But a lot of these projects are now going to move from pilot to implementation. And I'm wondering what kind of challenges you think that presents. I mean, this is a, a, new, a new dimension. It's one thing to build it, but it's another to actually deliver it to consumers. Yes. Um, and doing proof of concepts and prototypes, that's hard work, uh, but that's still the easier part of it. Uh, but you have to do that first to, to see, okay, what do you need to, what, what, do you, what can you actually take further? And here, uh, I'm going to be very honest and say we're, we're still sort of blazing out the trails for ourselves uh, on how we take, how we take um, projects further into what we call a handover process. So a little bit of um, terms of references here. Um, the, the, the BIS Innovation Hub doesn't have the mandate to take things to sort of launch and, and it can be you know, a subtech tool um, that, that uh, the central banking community might like and need, but we don't have the mandate to take it to, to their market and, and operate it. So um, if there is something that is promising, we need to uh, line up or find um, a central bank or a group of central banks that is willing to take this over and, uh, and run it. Uh, and I think one of the examples of this is, well, Helvetia, you heard Thomas Jordan talk about that, that they have been inspired and took on some of the knowledge there. Uh, Nexus is another good example of how uh, the hub staff is now helping, coordinating, advising this group of five central banks who are, 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 are willing to sort of explore this further. But there are many other ways to, to take things to market. And, and, and that's, that's hard work. It's one thing to, to build a prototype. Taking things with all the bells and whistles to a real life setting is, 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 is more difficult. And is there any tensions or overlapping issues, public and private sector, when you go to that phase of the project? So um, we are, so first of all, we, we always try to bring in um, vendors, at least one, probably more, into each project because we don't have all the skill set ourselves, but also we want to learn from, and the private sector is, has so much skills that we can uh, acquire. Uh, sometimes we're also making partnership 
Um, but to, to really nail your question, we, we are mindful that we are not supposed to take over what the commercial world can offer. So uh, we are in the space where we are aiming for public goods. Um, so things that the pub private sector cannot offer or do not want to offer or have not actually discovered that they should offer it. Uh, but we can be the sort of convening factor. But, but you know, I would be very happy if we can push um, the private sector to offer some of the things that we are um, pushing for, because then I can, you know, take resources and do something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let me ask about one of the public-private sector projects we've heard a lot about the last day and a half, Agora. Did I pronounce it right? Absolutely. Because we've been saying Agora until yesterday Agora. when we got, the, um, <laughs> we got the official edict from the BIS, so we'll make sure we take that back to DC with us. We, we heard the briefing yesterday, which was fantastic, from Morton, and there's a lot of questions, and I know a lot of work ahead. But I'm just wondering the step back a little, the significance of this project, these central banks that are involved in it. So, um, so Agora is um, uh, based on the uh, uh, notion that tokenization is a promising technology. And uh, um, if you really want to kick the tires of that, uh, you have to bring, and certainly if you want to explore the, the, the feasibility in the cross-border payment space, you need, uh, you need more than one central bank. You need, a, you need a, a couple of currencies to really test this on. And I, Morten Beck made a fantastic presentation yesterday, so I'm not going to repeat that, uh, but I would like to build on it and say I think it's a, it takes a, it's a great leap of faith, uh, and we're very, I'm very proud to see uh, these seven institutions that I was prepared to, to line up, uh, together with uh, private sector uh, that is now being lined up in the, in the next couple of weeks or months as well. Um, I've learned uh, from the various projects and previous in my career as well that um, you need to sit down together and start working and discuss what different sides of the society wants to achieve to really start to build the trust that is absolute key to, to reach um, progress. Uh, and I think um, Agora can be Possibly, you know, we will start with this phase on, on cross-border payments and we'll see if this coalition of willing that is now being formed is want to take this further. But um, I think this is, could be one of the, the great leaps. But let me be clear that um, we are both in the area where we try to improve the current systems, but we're also in this area where we sort of try to run ahead into the future and say, okay, the future is tokenized. What do we need to do now to actually get to that future? Um, and we are in both of these uh, areas, improve the current, but also build for the future. And I think Agora, Agora is, uh, is, a, is an ambitious um, approach that, um, yeah, we are very excited about, um, about the participants there. I know one thing we were particularly excited back in the US, and I know our colleagues are here from the New York Fed, that they were involved in it. Um, so that, I think that's a, a great signal, and I know uh, we'll look forward to seeing the next phase of the project. So let me ask, this topic has not come up much so far. I think Dante Desparte mentioned it yesterday. But I have to ask about geopolitics, because I run the Geoeconomic Center at the Atlantic Council. Some of these projects have come into the geopolitical debate. Uh, they've been talked about in national security dimensions. They've been talked about, I know in the US from our work, about the possibility of some of them eroding the use of the dollar or sanctions evasion. And I'm wondering what position that puts central bankers in. That's obviously not the natural territory for central bankers to be in. But currency is not just technical. It's not just policy. It's also political and geopolitical. So before I discovered economics, uh, my first intellectual love was actually history and political science. Uh, and if you combine these three subjects, which I did at some stage, um, you quickly realize that the whole um, concept around money and payments is sort of right up there with um, the sort of the business model of a state, <laughs> if I may call it that. Um, and history is sort of, it's a long line of um, powerful, you know, kings, lords, uh, and then sovereign states uh, being involved in this and thinking about how do we make sure it works or will not work. Sometimes that can be an objective. Um, and given the fact that it's part of the, of the sort of the business model of a state, um, 
everything we do, or a lot of things that we do, touch on sensitive issues. It's about sovereignty, independence versus how much should you be dependent, collaborate with others, what do you, what do you gain, what do you give away, um, unipolar, multipolar power structures. And then I haven't even mentioned um, the sort of the struggles between commercial vested interests and disruptors in the private sector and how that interchange and play out uh, versus the private public sector. So, so I'm not surprised in any way. I, 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 I think this is a very natural situation. Um, and I say to my staff, uh, we are aware, but we are not deterred. And um, this is not, you know, you know other gets to decide uh, what to take on out of what we try to create. And I also try to, um, I, I say to, you know, I say to people, you know, Look at life from the bright side. Uh, I say to my staff, look at life from the bright side. If you receive pushbacks, uh, it means that you are, you know, you are affecting something here. Someone is actually uh, you're causing someone to react, and uh, that's that's uh, that's a healthy thing. So we are aware, but it doesn't stop us from moving on. Yeah, you've I and mean, we've spoken about this before. I mean, the history of fiat and government's role in fiat, and um, the the politics and the policy that goes with it. That's just part of it. Um, and it always will be. Yeah, yeah. So that was the hard one. Now for the fun one. Okay. It was brought up yesterday uh, how how much uh, the BIS team takes uh, enjoyment in naming projects. I want to ask you the question we all want to know. Take us inside the process of naming a BIS Innovation Hub project. Sure. Uh, buckle up. Uh, <laughs> So, so let's start with the formality. So we have a pretty decentralized organization with the center. So typically uh, it's the project manager or the team or, or the center head sort of uh, who, who, who gives the name. Uh, sometimes I'm actually being invited to, to chip in with some names. And I, I had to uh, conclude that uh, there is quite a bit of disrespect for me because <laughs> none of the suggestions I have put forward have ever been taken. No one? That, what, no, well, what was your best that well uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you one thing. That I, I, I wasn't, uh, I, I can't claim credit for Agora, uh, but at some point I said, oh, for Christ's sake, let's, uh, let's take an old name for a marketplace, shall we? Uh, and that's, uh, that's what someone did then. Yeah. I don't know exactly who, but uh, that's the closest I've come, all right? <laughs> uh, but more seriously, um, uh, you, you can have, we can have, we use um, acronyms, a FUSE, fully, scaly, fully, fully scalable settlement engine, or NEO, uh, uh, <laughs> new economic observatory. That's, that's one way to do it. Um, the Nordic Center typically have um, names that uh, allude to concepts in, in, in that part, my part of the world. Uh, Raven, uh, um, Polaris, uh, Icebreaker. Uh, but it can also um, allude to um, what the area where we try to make improvements. So green finance, uh, Genesis Gaia, Symbiosis. Uh, and there is power in a name. Um, so. I think Mandala is a beautiful name. Um, the ELM processes is not very beautiful. We want to make them a bit more beautiful, so why not use the Mandala pattern as, a, as, a, as an inspiration? I think also, also Aurora, um, which is the Northern Lights or the Southern Lights, bringing light over the darker aspects of the financial system uh, to fight <laughs> ALM. Oh, you're laughing, but I think it's great. Uh, you know, um, uh, making, 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 you know, go after the bad guys in an efficient way by shining light on these things is, is, is beautiful. Um, but because name is powerful, there's also names we won't use. So, um, well, uh, Terminator movies were a great thing when I grew up, but still, uh, we won't uh, use an AI project name called Skynet. <laughs> That's probably for the best. Yeah. And, that wouldn't and, trigger any kind of. And, uh, and yeah. project robo governor won't happen either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed to hear that, but thank you for sharing that. Uh, someone on my team back in DC said, you know, the, the BIS Innovation Hub has made central banking cool again. I, I don't know if it's again or just cool for the first time. <laughs> uh, but uh, so credit to that. We have uh, just under a minute left, so this is a tough question with the very little time. But it's the forward-looking question. What's your vision, Cecilia, five years on 
for the innovation hub? What do you want it to be able to achieve? So Yogi Berra, I think, said it's hard to make predictions about the future. Uh, <laughs> so let's say what I think we're planning for. Uh, and then we need to be agile <laughs> because things have a tendency to change uh, while you make the plans. Uh, so I think tokenization is going to be a big thing. But I think AI might be even bigger. Uh, so I think uh, in, across all uh, projects and all our focus areas, I think is going to be AI. I think we're going to see an overhaul of, uh, of uh, forecasting methods, of supervisory methods. Uh, and I, I hope we can be helpful in that area. Uh, I think we're going to um, move forward, uh, perhaps narrow it down a little bit, move forward with some of our more promising uh, infrastructure projects. And, and that comes back to uh, what appetite the world will have for them, but, but we, are, we are ready to assist. And last but not least, we hope to uh, continue to be um, an inspiration and uh, speaking partner for central banks to uh, keep innovating themselves. And I, I say to people, it's okay to be risk averse, it's even okay to be conservative, as long as you have one part of the institution that is a little bit like us and have a separate IT structure and do the state of the art project management and you will see wonders down the road. Excellent, I think that's the perfect note to end on. Please join me in thanking Cecilia Thank you.